Welcome to another edition of Spits and Suds, 105.3 The Fan. I'm Gavin Spittle, joined by two-time Stanley Cup winner, one of your favorite all-time Dallas stars, coming off a big stars win against the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's Craig Ludwig. We ready to have some fun today, Luds. Is there a different host today? <laughs> or is it Gavin? Is Gavin, is that you? You bet, man. Hockey Hawk here. Uh, okay, well, then I probably would have a different answer but yes i'm 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 ready it's there's it's, eddie uh, the eagle and there's hockey hawk so there you go yeah <laughs> no no you, you, you're you're more like a snack for an <laughs> eagle but what you are is if you ever look in the sky and you always see you know the big crows and all that yeah that's little, yeah, it's big a good thing bird. Flying around. And there's that little tiny shitty pain in the ass bird that's always screwing around with the bigger birds. On I, its tail. I'm the crow. I'm and right. Away, yeah, that that's you. That's the that's you. The crow, right? Not the crow. The the little tiny nipping at people's heels, you know, pecking at their ears, trying to get the leftovers. <laughs> that's you. Okay, so. Before we start, since you brought it up, sir, I am an amateur bird enthusiast. Are you really? I, I have a, a real good friend who for years can be driving in his car with a window down and a bird can chirp, which you don't, I mean, and yeah. his name, his nickname is Boy. He'll tell you what it was. He, just, just like that. He'll tell you exactly what I'm, it was. I'm getting there. I, I'm I'm getting there. It's because of where I live near the Dallas Arboretum that I get a lot of like the white rock parrots have stopped by my backyard, which are awesome. I'll text you a picture. Um, but no, you just paint. You already painted another picture of yourself for me. So, <laughs> so good. You know, I will say as a 16 year old, I saw someone going into the woods with one of those hats and binoculars. And I said, man, I hope I'm never that guy. And now I'm that guy. So th- there you go. But uh, I tell you that because you mentioned crows, Craig, and I had a problem with hawk in my yard plucking off my doves that come to my yard. So just for those out there, if you can feed the crows, the crows will get rid of the hawk. And there you go. Oh, we're off to a great <laughs> start today. <laughs> the stars, speak. stars win 5-3. And, uh, there you go. yeah, absolutely. So here's, here's my thoughts, Craig. I, I you know, they, they aren't the prettiest wins, but at the same time, I, I think this stars team is collecting a lot of points and I don't think we've seen the best of this team yet. No, I, you know, again, I, you know, you've heard me say this and Dallas has played what seven, eight games, something like that. So I, you know, I'm always at the start of the season. I don't, I don't know if you can really judge any team um, till they play 10, 15, doing, you know, 15 and 20 games. I think once you get to that point, I think you're kind of rounding into who you believe that team is going to be the rest of the year. Um, <clears throat> I think you'll see, you know, some of the weaker teams in the league probably get better. Um, you know, because they're, they're usually like work in progress. I, San Jose, I don't know if they're going to get better. Um, but you know, for the most part, um, the good teams have a foundation and, uh, you know, Dallas has been working on that foundation now for four or five years. And I, I believe that, uh, with some of the additions that, that they made, they were, you know, trying to put a couple more, more bricks in place and, um, I think you're going to continue to see them get better in different areas of the ice. I think individually also, they're going to continue to get better. I mean, I think that I think we're getting a glimpse right now of what Matt Duchesne can be. Obviously, real good game from him. And he yeah. stood out in every game. I yeah, mean, I he was, has. I had, I had a question mark, you know, in the beginning of the year or even in the summer when when they, I'm like, man, does he have did does he have gas left? And, you know, I think we spoke about this last time. I think what he did is when he had you know, how many of her teams were interested in his services this year. He looked at the roster and went, Oh yeah, I'll play on that team. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's a team, this is a team that suits him and, and it's a coach that suits him, you know? And again, again, I think if you look at some of the players and the way that this team is built, um, I think he looked at it as a team that you can have fun on. 
And, and from a coaching standpoint, you know, they like to get up and go and, um, you know, we're always going to be concerned or at least I will be at what happens at the other end of the rink. But yeah, um, <clears throat> that's the good news is they got a guy down there and he, as long as he's staying healthy, um, you know, he, he seems to clean up whatever mess has come along. So, um, you know, it, it, it's going to be I, one thing for sure. Dallas and I think Jim Neal understands that and Jim you know there's been when you hear some GMs talk they get it um in the new the new generation they'll talk about this is an entertainment business you know we don't want to be they don't want to be the teams that that I played on you know yeah we had success but it was a different time but you know I mean we've had people talk to us after we won eight nine games in a row they'd say we're boring to watch <laughs> and I was always <laughs> like well would you rather see us lose six to two or be in the finals, you know, and, oh, no, no, we want you in the finals. So I think what, what this, and again, it's, it starts with obviously the, the league and, and the commissioner and, and, you know, the fans want an entertaining game. It's a new generation and, and Dallas is entertaining. I mean, they can, they bring you out of your seats at times at both ends of the ring sometimes. But again, yeah. like I said, what, what brings you out of your seat more often than not for me is that Jake made a great save. Boy, <laughs> you know, that that's special. Okay, as long as he's making the great save. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the fact that he didn't go for the move against Jenner and just caught the puck with the glove, you know, uh, almost caught it completely. But that was just a special third period. And that that was at a high moment in the game uh, with Columbus trying to claw back into it. So, um, you know, probably one that, you know, because Jake's a perfectionist that, um, you know, that one of those goals that you know, went underneath his arm, he probably wants back. But at the same time, isn't it funny, Craig, that we're at the point now where if our goalie gives up three goals, we're like, what's going on? I mean, that's he's serious. just that good. Yeah, that that's, again, to me, that's the difference between a regular season team and a, and a regular season slash playoff team. Um, you know, they, it, it's, it's just, it's the way the playoffs are. Things tighten up. You play the same team other, every other night for for two weeks and you know it's about adjustments and you know and, and when you got that guy in the back your game can change a little bit you know you can you can go ahead and say you know this is how we're putting our team together and you know we you know it, it isn't a three two league anymore you know it's more of a four three league I mean it and when I, I mean by goals and so um you know I think the fans like it when when there's more than three goals scored in a game four goals scored in a game. They, they want to see six, seven, eight, but they also want to see, you know, you come out on the right end of it. And when you have a goaltender um, that can make that. And when you say, when you say Jake didn't go for the move, I don't know if Jake ever goes for the move. And the only reason I say that is he's so comfortable. It, it seems like to me in his size, he is such a big kid and he takes up such of the net and, and especially things down low, he doesn't have to over, over adjust because he can go post to post with his legs. It, it was very similar to Ben Bishop, you know, when Bish was healthy and you couldn't get pucks by him, you know, and Ben was, I, I believe Ben was a little bit taller, obviously than Jake. And, and so those guys can play on their knees, you know, they can get down, they can take a lot of, a lot of space up and, and, and it's hard for guys that are scoring goals to find, you know, find holes in these guys. So I think he can be a little bit more, of a quiet goalie where, whereas when, when Wedgwood gets in there, or, you know, there's some other, you know, there's some smaller goalies in the league and I think it's, they got to work harder. You know, they got to travel farther to make a save that goes across the crease or, or even when there's traffic in front, you know, Jake stands straight up and down, you know, he's big enough and spreads himself out. He can stand and he can almost look over the top of, um, you know, who and what's ever in front of him. So it's a great advantage to have a guy that's got size and has the athletic uh, athleticism that that he has, and and he, there's just a calm demeanor about him that it seems like to me. I mean, regardless if he gives up that that goal that went between his legs last night, it was just a little bit of a drop of the head, and the drop of the head was like, oh shit, yeah. I should have had that. I know I should have had that, you know. So and then he and for what a great quality because that that's what Eddie was. I, you know, I always seem to go back to Belfort, but when Eddie let in a goal that he didn't think was up to his standards. You know, it, it wasn't a woe was me. It was like, okay, that's it. Done. No more of those. You know, and then he comes up with some special saves, which is what, you know, Otter's been doing. It was great to see the Stars come out of the box just 27 seconds in, scoring the first goal of the game. And I say that, Craig, because 
I wanted to get your thoughts as a former player. Only seven games in the last 19 days. What's it like as a player playing a few days off and then playing as opposed to the back-to-backs or the four games in the five days? Because I do remember you saying you loved getting back on the ice immediately in game-time situations. Yeah, you know what? I, I think you can look at it. depends on the summer, I think. Sometimes it depends on the offseason. Did you have guys that, you know, some key guys that – had some surgeries or had some bumps and bruises at the end of the season. And it gives you time to heal. A lot of times when you get into the, uh, the preseason stuff, you know, now it's, it's not like you have two, two weeks to get ready. You know, you come back and they all come back early. They come back early and they'll skate and a lot of them have kids. And so the school starts. So, um, you know, they'll, they get back and they start skating. And so, but there's nothing like playing real games. And, and even in the preseason games, especially for veteran guys, I mean, not to say that you go through the motions, but there's really nothing out there to prove for you until you get going. So with that being said, unfortunately, that's when those kind of injuries will will come along. You know, a little, little ache here, a little bump and bruise, a little strain on a groin and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, you can kind of ease into it a little bit. But I, I think <clears throat> you look at the teams that are out and out in front. I, I think you'd rather have that time off in the middle of the season, middle to the, to the last third of the season. So, you know, you're, I would expect this team to be in a, a fairly comfortable position with 20 games to go um, <clears throat> in the season. And, and it's a good time that, you know, maybe you just, you, you don't sit guys out, but you can maybe reduce minutes. And, and if they're not 100%, which nobody's ever a hundred percent after you play 60 games anyways, but but it's a, I think it's a nice luxury to have to say, you know, we've got Dallas has got a good a depth here. I mean, you can you can go ahead and you can look at the, you know, and now there's a solid top top three line. And I think the key in that top three line thing for Dallas is going to be, and we saw it last night. It, Mason Marchment, if he continues to play and and build chemistry um, the way he is, uh, the Donov been good or Dadanov, whatever he decides to call himself, depends tomorrow. on the day. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I just I just think that when you have that kind of depth, it, it's really nice. But then look at how the fourth the so-called fourth line. I mean, I've really liked Craig Smith. I mean, yeah. we know Delancre and, and your buddy Foxa. And so, but again, it, it they're role guys, and, and I think they understand their roles. And I think that's part of bringing in a guy like Craig Smith. And you know, he's come in, he understands his role. And if it's whether it's Delandria or Foxa, who may have been a top two, three center before, getting them to buy into, hey, we're a big piece of this team having success. You know, whether we're playing 10 minutes a night or we're playing 15 minutes a night, penalty kill, whatever it may be, it, it's an important guy to have in that situation with some guys. And I don't mean Foxa's young anymore, but but to be able to get them to buy into what they are. So there's a good balance here. And the, the question marks are, are, are getting answered. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I, I think that I think Thomas Harley can be a partner for, for uh, Miro. I, I really do. I, I don't look in that way, isn't it? <clears throat> well, and the only reason I say that, and, and this is no slight against Suter, none whatsoever, but but I think he defends better in certain situations at this time. And I think Ryan and, and Miro are kind of the same kind of guy. And, and I mean, Suits knows that 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 Miro is going to go. And 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 so he but he's probably not the top defender on the team. I, I don't think he is. But I mean, I, I think I've always thought of Essa being that guy. Yeah. But, you know, Essa's got some miles on him. But I, I just think Harley's been. Man, he's been for me. He's been really. Does he have little speed bumps here and there? Yeah, but that's part of the process of being a young defenseman. And you know, there's that number, so-called number, get to 200, 250, 300 games, and they say that's when defensemen are at their. <clears throat> they've learned a lot by then. I, I don't know. He's showing that that he's ahead of the curve. So pretty awesome. I just, thinking about it, Craig. You got young Hashkin in. You got young Harley. You got young Lundqvist. You got more defensemen coming from the minors. Good core for the future. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and, and again, you got to plug some other forwards in there because again, you, you know, guys like Joe and, and Jamie and Tyler aren't going to, you know, they're going to, there's going to come a time. 
I, I don't know if Jamie Ben's going to be able to play to 40 like, like Joe Pavelski does. Only because Jamie Ben's got, I said this, you know, I compared him to Brendan Morrow at times, you know what I mean? Playing that kind of a game and, and a physical game and fighting and everything else that Jamie brings to the table, it takes a bigger toll on your body. I think it took a bigger toll on on Brendan only because of a size standpoint. Jamie's a big, strong man, you know, so and he's proven he can still do it. But, you know, Dallas has got some, you know, forwards that I think that they're they're kind of happy when they see what's going on here. The player's not happy. There's a couple of players that want to be here and believe that they could be here. But in the long run, you know, it ends up. You know, you're not going to have all Wyatt Johnson that can just step into the lineup and and be really good. So three games for the Stars in the next four nights, and they have Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver. So they head to the west of Canada. And I wanted to ask you as a player and now current coach, I mean, the Stars have been on, you know, when they had to play Vegas and then Anaheim, there was some time on the road, spent time in California. You know, they talk about road trip as far as bonding. As a former player, now coach, can you go into depth about that? What kind of bonding takes place that doesn't happen when you're on your home ice? Well, the first thing that comes to mind, no kids, no wives, no girlfriends. Um, you know, so it's just the guys. And you're together 24-7 with the exception of, you know, six hours of sleep at night. <clears throat> That's about it for me because – but then again, I was the guy that didn't wasn't even around my family when I was in Dallas. So um, <laughs> it's it's um, it's different now. I mean, this this particular trip, three games in four nights. I mean, there's uh, you know what they're doing is they're playing, traveling, sleeping. That's what they're doing. Uh, you know, so there's not you're eating team meals together. You know, they're going to leave after games. So there's no going out and having a couple of beers after Calgary tomorrow night. Cause you're, you know, you're, you know, and I shouldn't say, I don't know their schedules. There are times when, but typically, you know, that you're going to, you're going to fly out uh, uh, right after the game, you know, and you yeah. get into your hotel room, um, they'll eat on the plane. You get in, get your key, go up to the room, shut her down, get up in the morning, uh, probably won't skate. And because they play that night, They'll have a team meeting. They may go to the rink. They may do it in the hotel. You come back, you have your lunch, you go up, you lay down for a couple hours for the most part. You get up, you get on the bus or take a cab over early, play the game, get on a plane. Next day, probably a day off, you know, the the, the day in between games, um, you'll have a the, you have breakfast, you have a team meal, you know, and, and it's rinse and repeat. So <clears throat> these aren't the bonding uh, kind of trips. I think the bonding trips that that happened back w- with us were um, where you would play, you go on the road for two, three days or two, three games, and you have a couple days off in between, you know, so and, and you weren't we at the time we weren't we weren't always flying out after games, we'd fly a lot of times, maybe the next day or the morning of or whatever it may be, um, you know, so you were able to go out at night. And, and you know, that brings playing guilty the next game too, which I think is a motivating thing, but, but that again, those times have changed. Um, Those were those to me, when you have the road can be, yes, it can be really good bonding time, but you got to have some time available to do it. And, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the scheduling now, um, along with, they have mandatory days off, you know, and so uh, you, you can't, you know, they do what they do. And like I said, it's not like where there's 16 guys getting together and hitting the bar at two o'clock in the afternoon and come rolling in at two o'clock and in the morning and that kind of stuff. It's just, that's not the way players are wired now. So, um, but you know, they're obviously a tight group. I mean, you can tell, you can tell the way that they, they, they joke around and, and, and again, they're not all going to be the same, but, uh, but I think they're a tight group to start with, but in order to have the bonding kind of things, you have to have some time, time in between games and, you know, a trip like this, it's usually like that. It's the same kind of thing. Unfortunately for guys, when they go out to California, I mean, it used to be where you'd have two, three days off in between, you know, but when you're playing the three and four because of travel and all that other kind of stuff, there's not a lot you can do. So, all right, coach Ludwig. Here's your decision. Trail. You go back to back. <laughs> you have Wednesday at Calgary, Thursday at Edmonton. What are you doing between the pipes? Or as oh, coach, I'm are you Wedgwood tomorrow night? Okay. Wedgwood tomorrow night, and then Jake back to back. 
So you're That's not giving me. you're not giving Ottinger the option. You're not saying Jake, which one? Or are you saying because I, I agree don't know. With you. you know, honestly, <clears throat> that's between him and his goalie coach. I don't know. Is I don't know the the relationship there. I don't know. Is Jake? Uh, I don't want to say too young. But I don't mean it like that. I, he's not the Patrick Waugh that that you know wrote his schedule down in August and handed it to the coaches and said, these are the games I'm going to play this year. I'm going to play 72 games. And these are the ones that I'm not going to play these. Um, I just think today's day that, and again, the only reason I say that is because with Connor McDavid being back in Edmonton, that that's a completely different team. And um, they seem to have a different jump when he's in the lineup. Yep. Tough game. Vancouver is a completely different team than they were last year. They're off to a great start. They're scoring a ton of goals. So I think, and Calgary hasn't won. Cal- Calgary's a, 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 they're a tire fire right now. So they have no idea what's going on. So I think, and again, if you can go ahead, you get the first goal, get it within the first 10 minutes of the game, their fans will go, you know, you'll start hearing it. And that's hard to play. Uh, you know, they've got a couple key acquisitions. Uh, you know, Kadri doesn't seem to be uh, all into playing for Calgary right now. And I think that, you know, you get some of the top players that are starting to doubt what's going on there and you can throw something at them early in the game. I just think it would, might be the, a good time. But again, the other the other side of the coin will say, hey, they're due to have a good game. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're due to win a game. <clears throat> so, um but again, they may be because I just think that I think you want Jake against Connor McDavid. That's what I think. I think you have, and so if you can give him a game off, get him ready for an Edmonton team, Edmonton game that seems to have, you know, McJesus is back. And so there's a different, you know, so I, I think that anytime you go on the road, you want to take two out of three games. I mean, yes, you want to win them all. But I think if you can you can save your number one guy in this particular situation with a team that isn't doing so well right now, they're not scoring a ton of goals. They got a lot of goals going in. Yes, the goalies the goalie played well the other night. Um, so it could be a two three game. It could be a two four game. Something like that. So I, I just think that's the spot to put Wedgwood in. Um, but you know, again, like I said, that that's between the goalie coach and the head coach. I, I agree with you. I was surprised that. Wedgwood was in against uh, Toronto, but I actually uh, thought he played really well. Um, yeah, yeah, but but again, like you know, that's a good team coming in, right? Yep. I mean that that's a good team, and you know, throw throw the guy in there, and and you know, again, I I think that I believe what they're doing. They know Dallas knows. This is my belief. They, you'll never say it out loud. They're a playoff team. They they should be. You know, them in Colorado to me are going to be jockeying for that number one spot, Correct. you know? And, and so, so if you've got to give up a couple games here or there with a backup goalie to make sure that your number one is, is well rested, has no fatigue that sets in that with a fatigue kind of injury, which always seems to be groin related or things like that, because we know the most important time of the year, it doesn't matter if you're going to finish number one, number three, number four, at the end of the year, if you're starting on the road, you're at home. You got to win in both places. Let let's have our most important player um, ready to go, rested, not overworked throughout the course of the year, and ready to go at the most important time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I promise fun. I'm bringing the fun. Are you into this Rangers World Series, sir? Can you believe it? I had my TV on a split screen last night. I love it. It's because I took you to yeah, a game. I, but you, you know, the it. damn thing only has the thing up on the right-hand corner, and I can't switch it to half and half. Oh. You know, it's supposed <laughs> to be one game on one side, one on the other. It, I can't get it to change. <clears throat> so it was like this tiny little box, so I had to just keep on flipping back and forth. Um, so, yeah, I am. But, you know, I and I'm not a guy, you know, 162 games a year, I'm not the guy that, you know, I have buddies that go to every game. They got, they got season tickets out there. And so, God, you know, they're happy as hell right now that, you know, they are where they are. So, um, yeah, I would say that I little I, I would be a little bit concerned, not too much, that the MVP of this World Series may have did the same thing that Connor McDavid did. It yeah. looked like uh, Garcia may have tweaked an oblique. When anytime you reach back there, you worry about a muscle pull. And when you're swinging, 
that isn't comfortable. So hopefully it's not that because man, he has just been on fire this year. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, it's hard not to be in a city and, you know, not get, I was at a, I, I, matter of fact, I was at a little sports bar for game one over, over here where I am. Oh, nice. Thanks for the invite. I would have bought drinks. I I should, I should have probably brought it up, but uh, Kim said, no, no, just, I said I was going to call Gavin. She goes, no, 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 no. Just you and I are going. Let's not bring Gavin along. I said, all right. <laughs> well, I bring that up because a lot of the players are superstitious and have their routines as well as broadcasters are in their routines now. And, uh, heck, even our radio hosts at 105.3 The Fan are sticking to their same, you know, in, until it goes wrong as far as wearing the hats and you know, if, if they lose, then they take the hat off. So I say that because recently we had Ed Belfour on, and he actually brought you up. So I wanted to play this clip and get the uh, in-depth story from the source himself, Craig Ludwig. So give a listen to two Ed Belfour, which I think are terrific stories, followed by the in-depth story from Craig Ludwig you know, help us win every game that that was possible. Um, you know, I'll tell you a, a story. Uh, when we were in Buffalo uh, in the Stanley Cup Finals, and um, one of the, the trainers, uh, his nickname was Pig, and, um, you know, we were in the third overtime period. I started getting kind of hungry, and I'm like, Pig, I need a, I need a milkshake. And Pig's like, oh, my gosh, where am I going to get a milkshake? But, you know, he runs off, and we're in Buffalo, right? He runs up to the kitchen, and uh, he he gets a hold of, of the kitchen staff. He's like, I, I need a milkshake. Do you guys have milkshakes? And they're like, no, we don't make milkshakes here. He goes, well, do you have ice cream? So he gets some ice, some ice cream, some vanilla, and he makes me a milkshake. <laughs> you know, in between periods, he runs back downstairs. I slurp on the milkshake. We go out and win the Stanley Cup. So that's oh, yeah. dedicated to staff was. <laughs> That's phenomenal. That is that yeah. is tremendous. I, I I love hearing about those superstitions and stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, I I had to have things a certain way. You know, you put your and and all of us were the, like that. We all went out in order on the ice. You know, you had to do it the same way. We listened to the same songs. Um, another story about that. Um, I didn't know about the the uh, the story until way after the fact. Ludge shared with me, um, but we had the the CD that we played every game. And uh, we had to have that CD, and, and I don't know, Ludge blames Maddie for, for getting it. I don't know who forgot it, but uh, somebody forgot to bring that CD on one of our road trips during the playoffs. And uh, Ludge gets gets a hold of Vinnie Paul. You know, Vinnie Paul mm-hmm. was a big part of our team, you know, and yep. putting together the uh, the Dallas Stars song. And um, he's like, hey, Vinnie, oh, my gosh, you know, Maddie forgot the uh, CD, and uh, can you go down to the rink and grab it and, and, you know, somehow get it here in time? And so Vinny, of course, went down there and grabbed the, the CD and got on his private jet and flew it in for us. And it got there just in time for our warm up. Wow. So, so there you go, Luds. That's a uh, kind of two cool stories. First of all, tell me the background on why your guy was called pig. <laughs> That's what he called himself. Oh, he's really? He's still there. He's still there. He's still security at the Is he at, really? At American Airlines. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I pig's still there. Yeah, he and he always calls me boss. Um, but yeah, he's he's just one of those guys. And you know, we had Don, and Don has since passed away that uh you know, that was the you know, basically sat outside the door and was there from day one and and Don would go ride with us and stuff. You know, we had, well, I don't know, seven, eight, nine guys, whatever that had Harleys. And so Don would ride with us and, and pig would always show up. He would knew, know, you know, some of the places that we would uh, frequent and you'd run into pig here and there and pig, you know what? Every team has got a pig <laughs> and I, why he calls himself pig. I couldn't tell you, but, but uh, he's proud of it. Um, but everybody, everybody, every team has one of those. And they're just they're they're the very loyal guys and they'll they'll take care of whatever they need. Um, you know, you know, and he was more of a security guy. And um, you know, out in the room, and that's what he does now. He's in the hallways and doing whatever, you know, his duties are at the down at American Airlines. So um 
Did you see them when you were in the room? Did you see them run the milkshake into Eddie? I never knew that. I never knew that. I, I didn't know that. I never, I never knew that Eddie, it, it sounds like Eddie said he had a milkshake all the time. I, I didn't, I had no idea. You know, guys are always, guys are always, when you come in, <clears throat> you know, there's blenders and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, in a little room in the, in, in your, in your uh, locker room. And so the guys are always making different things in there. You know, we had a thing called spark and, and all that kind of stuff, which is more of an energy kind of thing. And so that was a big thing for a while. And um, so guys have their, you know, their drinks. And again, we're all creatures of habit. And, you know, you, if guy, if you're a coffee drinker, you'd have a coffee at the same time, or you'd have three sticks of gum sitting on your, you know, next year and you'd have it at a certain time and you do, you, I mean, I, I'd stare at the clock when something I, st- I stare at the clock every all day long, all the time. I mean, Kim goes, why do you keep looking? I'd be in the middle of bait and watching a baseball game or hockey game here. And every three minutes I'll look at the clock. I just need to know what time it is. And um, because I'm a, if you're on time, you're late kind of guy. And so, you know, everybody has those little things. And, um, I did not know that, uh, that Eddie was that, that had a milkshake. But again, I said, we goalies are different and, and you let goalies, they have their thing. They're, they're the most important player. They're, they're the quarterback, they're the pitcher, whatever you guys want to pick for you let them be who they want to be. And when they lay their pads down, you leave them. You don't touch their pads. I don't care if it's in the middle of the room or it's in front of where you put your skates on. You don't touch them. And especially when they're good, <laughs> you know, because they're, they're the ones, that, especially for defensemen too. I mean, they're the ones that the mistakes that we make, we're counting on them cleaning them up. So, um, and you, and Eddie was always one, you know, he had his thing and he, he didn't, he wasn't a sociable guy when it was game day. And so you just leave him alone. Do you still to this day blame your defensive teammate, Richard Matvichuk, for leaving the Stars and Terra CD back in Dallas? No, it wasn't Maddie. Okay. Maddie had nothing to do with it. Okay. No, so who, who, no. The, who, who it, forgot? It, it was the trainers. The trainers are responsible for packing all that stuff. And when you, you know, I would assume that and i don't know this for a fact but you know st louis when they went on their run run they had gloria that was the thing and they had all the yeah. fans when they're at home singing it and i think they, they may still do it i don't know but rangers have but creed anyway, right now i <clears throat> i'll promise you that was playing in their locker room you know you'd think of all the songs but anyway um no when we got know that song you know there, there were we just had a cd and the trainers would always pack it because they're the ones that are always packing the boom box and the music and all that other kind of stuff that because they do everything that they possibly can to make the visiting room as much in, in which you can, um, but as close and you know feel as as familiar as you do at home. And so that was the trainers, and because the trainer came up to me, and you know because the, the song goes on at a certain time, the music goes on, and you know I had CDs, I made CDs up just music in general that we we would listen to, you know while you're getting dressed and all this other kind of stuff. Then that the song would come on at a certain time, and but prior to warm up. It, it was like when I first got to the rink. I mean, I knew at three o'clock, three or four o'clock. And it was like, uh, Luds, we got a problem. So what do you mean we got a problem? And well, we don't have the song. I'm like, what? Yeah, it didn't get packed. And that's when I went out and started calling. And, <clears throat> and I mean, it was, a, and the, it didn't even get there until, uh, uh, it didn't even get there until we were actually going out for the start of the game. We always played it for warm up. Then we played again when we went out. And it was not there for warm up. And when we were supposed to go onto the ice for the start of the game, Hitch came walking in. We we're all just sitting there, and he, and I'd kind of give him a little briefing on what was going on. And he just looked across the room. He looked. He goes, "What? What? What, what are you doing?" I said, "We're waiting for the CD." He goes, "Get on the ice." I said, "Nope." I said, "It's in the building." I said, "There was a, a, a car, a cabbie, a courier, whatever it was." Is bringing it, and I just got an update. It's in the building, <laughs> and he was. He looked at me. And he had some choice words and he goes, you know, they're on the ice. I said, yep. And that was it. And it, it came flying in the room. As soon as it hit that little boom box and it, the first note came, the guys stood up and we all started walking out. Wow. Don't, the whole team. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, so no one on the team had gone on the ice as of yet. Nope. Nope. Wow. We waited, we waited for it to come. We waited and we were, we were late getting out there for the start of the game. And uh, I don't think it was too late, but it was, it wasn't on time. You know, you typically get out and you skate around and all that kind of stuff. And we were all kind of sitting there and, 
everybody's kind of looking at you like, uh, what, uh, what are you, what, what are you doing? I said, just hang on, hang on. It's here. I'm getting updates. And, and, uh, so anyway, it got handed off. It got there. Somebody had it when it got out of the car is what I understand. Then it got handed to somebody just inside the building because they couldn't come in the building. Then somebody was running down the hallway and I was getting a little update. So, um, yep. Yeah, yeah, again, so, you know, all athletes are superstitious. I, I would say that I've run in, you know, some of the hockey players are same thing. If not, if not uh, some of the worst or best, however you consider it. So making the transformation from player to now coach, do you still have superstitions? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. When we're on the road and, and if, we're, if we're not on our bus, which we normally are, the, the head coach and I, it doesn't really translate to the players. Players don't get it. And they have their own, they have their own little routines and you don't ever, you don't ever mess with their things as long as things are going well. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll tell the bus to go a different direction. They're, they're the odd times where, We'll uh, we'll have vans and we'll get like three vans and then there's enough room in two of them for players and one in another van for equipment and that doesn't happen often. But if we don't play well in our prior game and we're going back to the rink for our next game, uh, Addy will go take one route. <laughs> I'll take another route. And so yeah, there there there's those kind of things, but um, probably not as much as when you were a player. I I, I don't. And I, I'm sure coaches have their little little things, but as a player, I think you're more dialed in because you're the one that has to have that that right performance every night. You know, I mean, when I was a player, there were times when if we lost the night before, uh, I would drive a different direction down to the rink just to start with. Yeah. So you know, but yeah, there's little things like that. So they're, they're not. I have more superstitious things when I wake up in the morning. Than, than I do um, as a coach and stuff like that. I'm still in that thing. I still, because I'm like, you know what? I woke up, I could be spitting dirt right now, but I'm not. So I'm going through my same little routine to hopefully that same thing happens tomorrow morning. <laughs> All right. So final question, uh, massive temperature drop here in DFW, Wisconsin guy. Are you more at home in this weather or do you want the heat back? Well, I'm more at home up up north because, the, like I told you before we went on, it, it's it's well, it's 44 here. It was 32 this morning, um, you know, which is cold here. But I mean, it's 44 now. It's 27 at home right now in Wisconsin, and there's snow. So I just believe if you know if it's this kind of temperature, there should be snow out there. I shouldn't be looking out the window and seeing the lake and you know the waves and yeah. all that other kind of stuff. And um, I would rather have snow if it's going to be cold. I'd rather have snow, you know. So. It's different. Uh, yeah, it's a different kind because, you know, and then here you get your Harley sitting in the garage and then you're like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, when are we going now. riding, man? Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I know when I'm going riding. I don't know when you're going riding. <laughs> so I don't know if your little your little scooter or moped is going <laughs> to get one of the rentals that they got downtown. Do they still have them, them things they were renting to people downtown? Did that ever fly? Oh yeah, those scooters are all They're over still the there? place. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, at least they took the place of the uh, bicycles. The bicycles were ending up, in, you know, in trees. <laughs> I figured they'd be, all be stolen by now. <clears throat> but no, nah, I think yeah, I, some I some, some kind of technology that locks it, and uh, you know, they're properly placed right now, and they're not just thrown about. So it actually you, see, you made, ride those, don't you? You you get them things, don't you? A lot of hip people do, but no, I actually don't. No, 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 no. I just said you. I'm not talking about all the hipsters. I'm talking about you. (laughs) No, I have not had the opportunity. Uh, Oh, you do. And you put some little bicycle helmet on, don't you? No, I don't. goggles. No, no. You portray me as this like non-cool guy, which is opposite. (laughs) (laughs) Just that you had to say all that. Now everybody knows it's not the opposite. (laughs) You got to toot your own horn, right? Oh, uh, if you can, if you can reach it, do it. <laughs> All right. He is Craig Ludwig <laughs> and I am Gavin Spittle. And thank you so much uh, for listening to another edition of Spits and Suds. Anything we want to promote from you, Craig? Promote for me? Yeah. Well, well what, what can possibly be promoted for me? I don't know. I do like Troy Aikman's beer. Eight. Yeah, it's a good beer. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a quality we're to beer get it on our podcast, you know, oh. our Suds and Bloods podcast. So we're trying to, you know, we're, we're, we're going down all the roads. We're, yeah. we're trying to get anything on our podcast. Still, still, <laughs> still waiting to get on that podcast. By you the know, Radigan's on the podcast with me now. Well, that's good. John's a great yeah, guy. Yeah. John is, you know, with, I think the, uh, I don't know what the deal is with ballets and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, there, he's got a little free yeah. time. And so 
Radigan, Radigan, actually, John, I mean, what a, I'm going to tell you something. That's the guy you need to have on a podcast. You can just say uh, tennis and don't say another word. <laughs> he just <laughs> he just knows everything about everything. He's he's jumping on with Nate Newton. He gets on with Kevin Mench yeah. and with Harp. And so Brad's um, is great. We had him fill in uh, for Rangers pre post and he was terrific this year. Yeah, he's he's unreal. I mean, it's just it, it really doesn't matter to the sport. I, you know, and I got a chance to work with Rads for a long time. And uh, when we were doing a thing, at, you know, over there on, on the before pregames and all the kind of stuff. But it's just and you know what the, th- the thing is, <clears throat> he goes, it, this is just fit. He goes, suds with luds. And so the first show he did with me, he's looking at me. We did it on a computer like this kind of thing. He's looking at me on the other screen and he's got, where's your beer? He's holding up a beer. He's holding up a Miller Lite. He goes, where's your beer? I, I was like, oh, shit. It was 10 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, oh, shit, sorry. So I had to run to the fridge and grab a beer. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, it, it's uh, but he's just such a knowledgeable and you can tell he's been doing it, you know, since God was a cowboy. I mean, he's just so comfortable and can talk about anything and anybody. And, you know, we got into the Dion. Right. And so, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't. I'm not into college football. I just, I never have been. I'm more an NFL guy. And as soon as I, I watched the show of, of Dion, you know, I, I, the prime, I think it was called prime on Amazon or something like that. And I, I've always liked Dion. And um, anyway, so we got on that topic there and he goes, you know what I got? Rad says, you know, I have a picture, of, you know, you, me and Dion together from years ago. I'm like, what? And he goes, oh yeah, we were somewhere. And you know, Dion's getting a picture. I haven't seen it, but I, and I don't, honestly, I don't remember. It. And I said, well, are you getting them on? And he goes, I'm doing it. I'm working on it. You know, so that that's nice because, you know, when you're talking about guests and stuff like that, you know, that's where I kind of would lay out because I'm I'm not going to be able to talk football as well as Radigan can talk football. Yeah. It's funny to listen to him and Nate do it. You know, Radigan's talking about certain systems and plays and, you know, all this other kind of stuff. And I mean, I played football for a long time, but to have that conversation with Nate, you would think he was a broadcaster for him. So anyway, it, it's just really nice having Rads on. That's badass. That's badass. Yep. All right, Stars fans, if you have feedback for us, at GJ Spittle, hit me up. And remember to like this podcast, tell your friends. There's a local podcast doing Stars Talk, telling great stories from the great Craig Ludwig. And Sean will join us uh, later this week. That's going to do us for a, another edition of Spits and Suds. See, you had fun. You laughed, Craig. You had a good time. Well, how can you not have a good time with the hipster Gavin Spittle? Yes, see, you're coming around, my man. You yeah, are yeah. coming little, around. Little bird, little bird that's always screwing around with the big birds. <laughs> that's right. To get a free ride. The crow getting rid of the hawk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Spits and Suds, everyone. Have a great day. 